As they say, there's no shame in folding. You're really throwing away money. Do you remember when you first started playing poker and you heard the term defend the blind? Sure. You know, I, mean, I always I thought it's a it's like a dare, a challenge. Like you had to do it. Right. You know, of course you would defend the blind. Sure. You were weak if, if you, you didn't. Did. Right. Exactly. Right? So you had to. Right. And and over the years I've come to believe that that phrase, defend the blind, more than any other, has put more money in my pocket <laughs> because it's one because of the worst. Because you don't do it. <laughs> right, because I don't do it and people do, and it's one of the worst plays in poker. And so wait a minute. I thought the title of this video is <laughs> Defending the Blinds. We were forced into calling it that because that's what we call it. But that's what we're talking about, calling a raise from the big blind. Exactly. And that's the topic today. You know, when should you do it? And more importantly, when should you not do it? And the answer is usually. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> was that okay? That was great. It was okay. delicious. Okay. By and large, the disagreements are really not that wide among people that play seriously. So maybe I will choose to fold Queen Jack offsuit mm -hmm. and somebody else says, well, I'll call Queen Jack offsuit, but I won't call Queen 10 offsuit. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Right. It's close. I mean, right. it, it's close. The, the main thing is that people that have put a lot of thought into this agree that, that you should fold 10 six offsuit. Exactly. You know, so there's this huge swath of hands that we're in agreement on. And right. then we, we, meaning poker theorists, ends up you know, nitpicking about the borders. Right. But it's the bulk is yes. what really matters. This it is the big, ugly bulk of crappy hands right. where the money gets lost. And people feel like, oh, I just want to throw my money in and see a flop, or I'm closing the action and let's see a flop or whatever. Uh -huh but you're really throwing away money. Yeah. The way I put it to my clients is like, let's say it's folded the button mm -hmm. and he's raising 100% of the time. Right. You've got seven deuce offset. Do you think you should fold? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I keep going up and up and right. up. And then they get up into the range of like say 10-8 mm -hmm. offsuit. Right. Like, this guy's playing 100% of his hands. I'm going to see the flop with 10-8 right. offsuit. I was like, how can that be so bad? Or like, King-5. I remember when we learned that King-5 was like the borderline hand, the break-even hand against a 100% button raise or whatever. Right. So if you have King-6, you should play because right. you're ahead of his range. Mm -hmm. Well, but that, none of that takes into account the playability of the hand right. and the positional problems yes. that you have. So ultimately, we're going to be suggesting some tight folding ranges, but the reason isn't because of the cards themselves. Mm -hmm. It's because of the positional consequence. Alrighty then. What we're talking about here is that if you just called and then the dealer ran out five cards, Maybe you do fine. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's not what happens. Right. And then you have to play a hand out of position with a piece of crap, and that's just no fun whatsoever. Yeah. So let's say you're on the button and you open with 10-9 mm -hmm. suited. Right. Okay. And the guy in the big blind he hesitates for a second, you don't think he's got a great hand, and he calls. Right. So how do you feel? I feel great. So I've got the button, yeah. I didn't get re-raised, I have uh -huh. a perfectly playable hand. Right. Let's play some poker. But what feels great is that you're last to act. You That's bet. really where it comes well, from. Yeah. So when the flop comes ace, ace, deuce, mm -hmm. and he checks, and you bet half pot, he's going to fold 95% of the right. time. It's like everything is so easy and beautiful yeah. when you're the pre-flop raiser, yeah. and you've got one caller, and you're last to act. Yes. Right? So if it's that great to be the raiser and mm -hmm. be last to act against one caller, then right. obviously it's really bad to be the other person. No easy way we talked about this phrase, defending the blind. Mm -hmm. And in our pre-filming prep, we were talking about, <laughs> maybe we should use the phrase defending the button. Oh, exactly. Well, that makes sense if you think about the term defend in war, right? And if you're a general, right. you want to defend the high ground, right. right? The button is the high ground, right? The button is the higher ground of poker. Yeah. 
and it makes sense to defend the higher ground. Right. A general is not going to find the worst, lowest ground yeah. and try to defend that. And dump his money in there, his, right. his resources into there, which exactly. is exactly what you do when you defend the blind. You're right. taking the worst position in poker and you're putting all your soldiers in there. It just makes no sense. Right. If you feel the need to defend something, defend the button. That's the higher ground. You can stand me up at the gates of hell that won't back down. You know, Tommy, I think this defend the blind phrase mm -hmm. gets our ego involved. Oh, it does. Yeah, our pride. Right. Yeah. Oh, I have to defend the blind. Yeah. What, are you raising my big... Oh, that's a phrase. Uh -huh. Are you raising my big blind? <laughs> yeah. No, he's raising. Right. It has nothing to do with your big blind. It's right. just dead money in the pot. Yeah. So don't let that kind of ego-driven thinking uh -huh. drive your decisions about whether you're going to call a raise or not. And if you want to pump your ego a little bit, there's another side of this, which is... It shows strength to be able to let go of things. Right. And to just let go and like, okay, I'm done with that. I don't care. <laughs> A good general is not going to be humiliated because yeah. he chose not to have a battle right. when the enemy had the upper ground. Right, exactly. As they say, there's no shame in folding. Let's get into some specifics about types of hands. Mm -hmm. So break it down in a couple categories. Pocket pairs, yep. uh, hands with an ace, mm -hmm. and then other. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> okay. So pocket pairs are pretty straightforward if you're getting... We love pocket pairs. <laughs> we do. You know, always defend with your pocket pairs if you're getting the right uh, implied odds based on the stacks. Exactly. Pretty simple. So now let's talk about ace high hands. Okay. Suited aces mm -hmm. are huge hands and yes. no limit hold them. We both are in favor of defending the blind with suited aces. Right. And the reason is, is because they make the nuts. And that way, mm -hmm. if accidentally two flushes happen, you're always the one that gets the stack. Right. And you have an ace. And you have an ace. <laughs> Which it's, is huge. It's right. a wicked combination. Right. Yeah. Okay. Offsuit aces. Mm-hmm. A little trickier. I tend to let them go, but you tend to play them. Well, I, I play them in heads up pots. Okay. So if I know it's going to be heads up, mm -hmm. I'm perfectly happy defending. I'm, see, I can't even get away from using that. Right. <laughs> Words <laughs> matter, Tom. Right. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy calling a raise in the big mm -hmm. blind right. with ace, deuce, off suit in the rare situation where I'm up against a super bluffy player. Mm -hmm. And I think he might, you know, I might be willing to call with ace high on the river or whatever. Rare situation. I don't right. always call with those hands. Right. But that's the only time I do. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, with off suit aces, the lowest I'll go is ace 10. Okay. Is that the same for you? Sure, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have other, which other. is king, queen, and down. Right. Okay. Um, king, queen holds a special place in my heart. Anybody who's read Elements of Poker knows this. I came up with hand groups in that book. And king, queen is its own group. Okay. There are only four groups. For me personally, I draw the line there where king, jack, and down mm -hmm. is where I, I default fold to a raise mm -hmm. in the big blind. That's about as high as I would recommend anybody go. Okay. And uh, so where are you on those kind of hands? Okay, I tend to call probably with any suited broadways. Okay. Yeah, and an interesting thing is, is that I care more about suits than you do. All right. right, so for instance, I would probably fold queen, jack, off suit, mm -hmm. but I would probably play queen, jack, suited. You have to draw a line somewhere. You do. And, you and absolutely the, do. the stream just happens to flow in yeah. that particular place in my world. The point is, is that you know what your line is and it's intelligent. It doesn't involve 7 4 off suit. That's the main thing, it's just not leaking by playing bad hands. Yes. The difference between queen jack and queen 10 and queen 9 is not going to be the difference between you being a successful poker player or not. That's so The difference crucial. between yes. queen 9 and 7 4 is. I want to have a specific discussion about the small suited connectors. Don't you forget about me. Because okay. people love their small suited connectors. They're 6 5 suited. Mm -hmm. Those hands do incredibly poorly 
out of position in multi-way pots. And there's a popular myth that 6.5 suited plays well in a multi-way pot. In mm -hmm. fact, it doesn't. Those hands have very poor reverse implied odds. And what reverse implied odds, well, let's back up. I'll come in again. <laughs> implied odds means that you don't mind calling with a pocket pair, even though you're not getting the exact direct odds to flop a set, because you believe if you do flop your set, you'll get somebody's stack. Right. Reverse implied odds means if you hit your hand, there's a very serious danger that you'll give your stack to somebody. Yep. And in particular, something like 6-5 suited, if you make a flush and there's another flush out there, you give your stack to the person with the bigger flush. Right. So this myth that the small suited connectors play well in multi-way pots is just that, it's a myth. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good place to start tightening up your big blind calling range and get all of those hands out. Why would he want to tell us what's to come? Knowing what happens in that future allows us to change things now so that some things never happen. If you are going to call a raise in the big blind, mm -hmm. one of the things that really matters is whether you're closing the action or not. Because if you're not closing the action, and we've talked about this in other videos, uh -huh. there's always the danger that somebody's going to reopen the raising right. behind you, right. and you're just going to throw your cards away, and you don't even get to see a flop. I guess the situation would be like, let's say somebody opened, and somebody three bet. Right. And, and you've got your pocket sixes or whatever, and you're getting the right odds to call there, but there's a very real chance that this guy's going to four bet. Right. You got to factor that in mind, because right. you're not closing the action. Similarly, two people limp mm -hmm. and the cutoff raises and now it's back around to you. Right. And you're in there with a somewhat marginal hand in the right. big blind and you think, man, I think this hand is good enough to play. The yeah. problem is, is that if you call and the under the gun wakes up in three bets, right. you're going to have to throw your cards away and now you've just wasted that call. You know, the way I first started learning about folding the big blind was just watching people fold the big blind. Mm -hmm. And it would limit hold them, it was even more shocking because there would be like a million bets out there. Right. And the old tight guys would keep folding the blind right. and they would keep walking away with the money every day. Right. And that's really how I got introduced <laughs> to the whole right. concept. Our ticket to the casino suggestion is hold more from the big blind than you do now. If you're in the habit of just defending the blinds because it sounds like the right thing to do and you're going in there all the time with 10-8 offsuit, mm -hmm. if you start folding those hands all the time, we can pretty much guarantee that you're going to like the improvement in your game. And you know, I would say if you could get the phrase defend the blind out of your vocabulary, you'll be happier and probably have more money. <laughs>